Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. This time around for a spot of resto modding is a Matchbox 1981 Rover 3500. So then, this car, the Matchbox version of this 3500 Rover, or an SD1, which I'm going to turn this one into, was quite a popular car back in the 80s. Um, there is, well, not only in, in actual model cars, but in the real world as well. So I'm just going to compare two versions of this. The one on the left is the one I'm going to do, which is the Matchbox, the Leslie Matchbox version. And the one on the right, the blue version, is a Corgi one. Now, I prefer the Matchbox version only because of the, the scale and the details look a lot better, albeit these daft tow bars they used to put on all of them back in the day. The Corgi one looks a little bit flatter. It looks squashed. The roof line looks a little bit, you know, low slung. Some of the details are, well, if you look at the Matchbox version, the lights are relief. They go in on the Corgi one, they come out. They've got this working tailgate, which throws the proportions out a little bit for my liking. It's got the horrible yellow windows in it, which is neither here nor there, because I'll get rid of them anyway. But here they are side by side. Yeah, I just prefer the Matchbox version. It just looks a little bit more to scale, a bit more details in there. Just overall, I prefer it really. So I just wanted to compare the two and just show them both side by side as to what you guys thought or think of them. But I'll get cracking straight on with this one anyway. So I'm going to drill the chassis away from the body and i've already done tutorials on this so i'll put a link further down in the description so you can jump straight to that and i won't bore you too much with it but this version it's got the two little pins the little posts sort of say on the rear of it rather than well making it making three basically normally they've got one at the front one at the back this one's got the two at the back so they were a little bit smaller than the body post on the front so you've got to take a little bit more care on this one but once we remove said body and it's got this nice little sunroof mechanism in it which is going to go anyway but nevertheless it was a, a nice little feature back to play with in my younger days because as always this is another one of the ones that I had in my pocket and I played with back in the 80s so it's not one that I found on eBay. It is one of mine, but there's the interior. Great little, although it's just fallen off, this little suspension spring, little spring steel in the middle, which is a great way that they used to hold the wheels in. But once it failed, it failed dramatically and you had limping cars for the rest of your ownership. So whilst it's good when I'm modding them and restoring them now, uh, back in the day, it was a bit of a pain. So looking at the overall shape of the body as i say it's got some great little detail lines in there so we can make good use of this the paint as always is cracking it's split off it's been bashed around but overall there's a little bit of pit in here and there it's probably more damage down to being sat at the bottom of a pile all the years but i'm gonna strip the paint and i'll put that link in the video because I've done that a fair few times and there's a tutorial on this. But as you can see, this one is proper, well and truly stuck on there. And this has had 24 hours bath in the little paint stripper that I use. So I'm just going to get some wire wool on it this time. Because as I said, there is some pitting on there anyway. So I will actually sand and file this back in some areas so rather than spend another 24 hours trying to strip that paint and i've used the caustic soda in the past but i've got my own preferred methods and i don't particularly like using that volatile stuff anyway so it just needs a little bit of handwork on it which is neither here nor there so i'll get me rotary tool and just get into some of these fine lines around the lights and around some of the details and just use that brush 
brushed wheel just to get some of this off as well and get it back to metal so overall a little bit more work trying to get the paint off this one but hey ho it's never always straightforward but once it is all off you can see laid bare the details a lot better and as i say i think this is a lot better detailed than the corgi version but as I'm going to do a race car, as I always do, it's got to get rid of that sunroof. So I'm just going to file the lip around the top part of the roof down so it's flush in line with the roof itself. And I'm simply going to put a little dab of glue around the opening underneath and cut a little slither of styrene just to fill in that gap so I can go from above with some modeling putty so a little bit of CA glue on the end of a toothpick all around the edges as I'm doing and then I've already cut to size this little piece here which I'm just going to pop in like so and once it's set, which is only a couple of seconds, a little bit of positioning, I've got that area now. I can just fill that top end in with some of the Squadron Products green putty. You can use different types. I like this green stuff because it's green. I can see where I'm putting it, basically. There's no other, well, at least I don't think there's any other special properties of this other than it's uh, green so you can see it but I prefer this stuff it dries really quick it dries that quick actually if you don't get the top on the actual tube itself you, you, you've got it dries in next to no time so you're forever wasting tubes in my opinion anyway so make sure you put your top back on it I've gone through too many of them just purely by wasting it but I'm a little dab on you can wet your fingers and keep molding it for a minute or two but it really does start to dry quite quickly but when it sands it sands beautifully without any fine cracks it goes down really really smooth and once you've done the harshness of it or the first fix you can go in with the second fix and flick over with a nice fine sanding board and get it uber smooth so right then on to the front bumper the st1 had a nice lower slung bumper air dam whatever you want to call it so i'm just gonna chop away at the front because it's going to have to sit down quite a bit it's going to foul the existing chassis and i don't really want to put it on the chassis i have to make it in two parts essentially so I just trim away a part of this plastic chassis and this was at the point where Smashbox were getting pretty cheap with the chassis actually but prior to that the nice metal ones they were lovely and sturdy but the plastic they started to use back in the 80s it did start only going one way quite cheap and cheerful although they've got a lot better now they've reinvented themselves but this was in the cheap era and still got a little bit of strength although i'm going to bolster it up with this other little piece that i'm going to put on it now but that opening on the front needs filling in first of all so i'm just going to cut some more little slithers of styrene to fill in to bolster it up before putting some epo putty and molding it and sanding it to shape so i'll just fill in that gap now by simply trying to hold it against the front just to get my measurements quickly just so I know how much to cut but all, all I'm going to do is just make a rough little couple of pieces if you've got the right thickness great but I haven't got the right thickness so I've just as you can see put two pieces on top of each other there cut to shape just to fill in the line really so the little bit of the wing that is hanging down now i'm going to trim that away because that's going to foul the other little part of the bumper that i'm going to stick to the chassis side of things it doesn't matter about how rough it looks at the moment because i'm now going to put 
some of this EPO putty on the front by mixing two equal parts of the resin in the hardener. And I always do far too much of this stuff, so it always ends up looking like a sweet, like a flump or something. And then, yep, there we go, there's the spoiler. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Not. But once it's had time to dry, it is rock solid stuff. Recommend this highly. But whilst it's still going off, you can just trim a little bit away. But I tend to leave it for 24 hours. I think a packet does say six, but I will we'll leave it 24. So it's lovely and hard like this. You can sand it, cut it, tap it, drill it. And I always tend to put more on purely because I can sand right back. It's better to have more and trim away essentially than having not enough and having to start all over again that's where i'm going with this but as you can see you can sand it you can trim it back with a sharp knife if you take a little bit of care or a lot of care should i say and by simply scoring some of the lines in where you want to chip away makes life a little bit easier as I'm doing here on the rear spoiler so just screw in that line where I need to be and then just shave it away with the knife and then do some final sanding afterwards and that is all that there is to it I've left a little bit on still at the moment because I'm still don't know where I'm going with the build of this front bumper so I know it is still a little bit oversized at the moment but I will sand it back and trim it inside but I'm still offering bits up to it just to make sure it's all okay and it's all going together nicely or at least not fouling anywhere at this stage but I'll jump on now to the lower part of this bumper which I'm going to attach to the lower half but as you could see there was still the mounting hole there so I'm just going to trim around that which I've done I've already cut to size and shape and then I'll glue it underneath. Now for the main part of the bumper, I've found some C-section in my little styrene overspill pile. As I've said many times, I've saved every single piece. So I've got stuff that will last me an absolute lifetime. And all I'm simply going to do is melt. There is actually a little flame in there, although it's hard to see. But if you just watch, there you go. The heat will melt it down. Don't hold it over too much because it will melt right before your very eyes so just take a little bit of care and a little bit of time a bit of distance and it will conform and bend really easily and the reason why i'm going to use this c-section because now as i'll show you it will fit rather nicely around the little lip of the bottom part of this bumper mount if you like so it'll glue rather easily to there without minimal fuss and as I say I'm glad I've left a bit of that epo putty bumper over because I do need to trim it back so that still looks a little bit out of shape at the moment but overall this bottom bit is pretty straightforward to do with these two pieces of styrene. I'm just going to cut a little bit away now just to give it that little mouth opening. A little bit of an air duct for the radiators or radiator on the front but it sits okay, it sits fairly accurate. I'll do some final sanding of that bumper before the final layer of paint goes on but overall that's starting to look more like an SD1 now on the front. Yep, and then the rear. I just probably need to fill in a bit of that gap on that lower half of the chassis. But the wheels, I'm going to use the PNW Diecast Customs and the 3 inch tyres made by a guy called 3 inch. I'll put both the links in the description as I always do. But I love these wheels that this guy makes. Really accurate, super smooth. And then for my axles, I'm simply going to use some 
dressmaker's pens. I will cut the ends off so they're not as sharp. Uh, make them to the right length, obviously, and then simply glue them in. And then, as always, one thing I often omit to do is show that they actually do roll the cars. But already it sits quite nice. On Instagram, people said it didn't sit nice, but you're all entitled to your own opinion. So I thought it sat all right. So I've just put a bit of primer on the main body just to make sure it's all nice and smooth, which I'll put to one side for now. Uh, there's that little fill, the little infill on the gap where the tow bar was on the chassis, which again, I'll wait for that to set and I will sand down shortly towards the end. But then onto the interior. Obviously, it's a race car, it needs a suitable race interior. I've put videos up before of me doing this, but I've actually done a standalone one as well. So I'll do a link to that. So I'll jump over this fairly swiftly but there will be a link in the description below to show you how i do a step-by-step -step making a chassis but oh sorry interior should i say i do need to do another video and make show you how i make chassis as well so yeah i'll add that at a later date but for now there's a link in the description for the interior so quickly going over it it's simple measurement of the existing one for this particular one centralize it make a hole in the center so it can fit over the top of that locating pip for the little chassis spring I'm going to utilize the existing dashboard so i'm just going to trim that off i will add to it some of the little dials and whatnot as i go along but makes life a lot easier by just at least keeping that so i just put a little bit of styrene underneath it just to lift it up a little bit and make sure it sits in line with the windscreen and all the rest of the interior again a link in the description for these little bucket seats made by a great guy on youtube uh, sorry on instagram which i'll put his link in the description below and then finally just some little details all around on the interior just to Make it stand out and make it look a bit nice really so some little ribbing in the chassis floor pan some little, little transmission tunnel again another pin for the gear stick and then moving swiftly on to the roll cage again some little one millimeter diameter styrene tube it's simply just offered up to the car to get the right measurements held over a flame just to bend it you can bend the tube or the bar but it does weaken it then the minute you try and put some of this mech on it to glue it together it splits and cracks and snaps straight away so overall here's the finished hand crafted interior Again, I've done it really quickly on this video because I don't want to bore you too much with it. If there's an exact video on how I do these, which I'll, as I say, I'll put in the description. But there's the Rover SD1 version. So quickly, finally doing the body and masking. I'm going to paint the main bulk of the color this time. So I'm going to mask off a lot of the areas, but it's got some stripes along the side for this particular livery. So very finely cut some thin pieces of masking tape so I can get them lines across. I was thinking of using the decals for this, but on this occasion I thought I'll spray it. I've already done the base coat of the white, but I'm going to use some of the Tamiya X7 red acrylic paint. Put a bit of thin although it is airbrush ready I have put a little bit more thinners in it because it does tend to get a bit cloggy over time and I've had a just pop for quite a while so give it a quick light dusting first few base coats before going on with some heavy coats and it's a fairly easy one to do this it's just the moment of reveal now just to see if it's bled underneath just by picking away at this very 
tentatively and oh, yes blood <laughs> not to worry i will put a bit of white paint over that anyway because i want to lacquer it overwards afterwards sorry when i put the lacquer on afterwards it will sort of hide any more imperfections anyway so i'll just go over some of these white lines with some white paint and just fill that in but there's the main base coat of the paint and then i'll finish off with just a little spot of painting of the interior a bit of detailing and i won't go mad on this just i always paint the roll bars silver but you know i think we all know some roll bars are the same color as the chassis itself or as the car itself so rather than camouflage it in i like to make it stand out a little bit and then interior wise i will add this to my shop but I've made some little white decal dials for cars. They're very, very small. They're sort of a millimetre and a half, up to two, even up to three, actually, for some of them. So they're very, very tiny, but it gives a sense of something there. And I'll probably do some more dashboard-themed ones, actually, some more different dials for different cars. But there's the finished piece with some masking tape seat belts as well and then one final thing i did f nearly forget was some wing mirrors and all i've done is used one of these ball headed pins plastic ball headed and i've simply sanded it down by holding it in a pair of pliers like i'm just going to quickly show you and by spending uh, 10 minutes or so just filing them down you get a nice little wing mirror it saves all the hassle of trying to mold some epo putty on the end of it and waiting for it to dry but let's get looking at how it finally ended up so here's what it originally looked like the old rover 3500 that i think had a caravan on the back of this one i used to play with them a sand pit but it was a little bit naff color it was a bit battered and bruised and now my version the bastos liveried race car and i think i'm rather happy i say rather there were some little bits of paint that i'm not overly happy with but hey ho i can't win every single one i think the wheel set it off brilliantly i like this version you can make out all the interior on this one. These are one of these little garages that I make as well. If you check out the link in my description. But overall, I'm rather pleased with it. Done some white decals for the Bastos logo itself. And then obviously normal coloured versions for the other Texaco. And all the Bastos parts. Got the name on the side, Win Percy. And Tom Walkinshaw, TWR Racing. Little exhaust, which I've made in other videos. Finally, to finish off that back end. You can make out most of the interior. I made the windows again from some 140 GSM acetate. Simply cut to shape. I've decided to leave them out for the front, but on the rear I've made them sort of halfway down if you like but overall that is my version of the old matchbox rover 3500 i hope you like it until next time <laughs>